Chapter Ten of the Captain's Story. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The Captain's Story by William S. Martin. Chapter Ten this act of course chosen in youth through manhood he pursued till due provision for his modest wants had been obtained and thereupon resolved to pass the remnant of his days untasked with needless services from hardship free his calling laid aside he lived at ease woodsworth the successful issue of my voyage not only gained me the entire confidence of the owner of my ship but also put me in possession of a considerable sum of money with which i was able to my very great satisfaction to meet all claims against me besides supplying my friend's need as i told you this however left me without anything to live on so that i was obliged to undertake a second voyage in spite of a certain uneasy feeling of which i could not get rid since the time when in the prison i had received the assurance of the pardon of all my sins i had been it is true quite satisfied as to the safety of my soul knowing that god had received me into his fold whatever might befall me all things must work together for good still i could not altogether overcome my apprehension at the thought of my father's curse and of its influence on my temporal happiness and well-being i felt that i was justified in this when i thought of the fifth commandment honour thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long in the land which the lord thy giveth thee he who honours and consequently obeys his parents i thought has a promise here of a long and happy life not indeed of eternal life to gain which he must honour god and keep his commandments that is he must be converted and have faith in our lord jesus christ for this is his commandment if he neglects this he may indeed lead a long and prosperous life here and yet lose his life hereafter he who on the contrary disobeys his parents cannot be happy and successful in his earthly career although he may by sincere repentance and faith obtain forgiveness of god for his saviour's sake and everlasting happiness if he has brought down upon himself his father's curse even this forgiveness will not alter its effects in this world although in the hands of the almighty the very sorrows and sufferings it brings upon him may become the means of securing his eternal salvation thus convinced as i was that for his dear son's sake god had forgiven all my sins i still remembered with alarm those words in my father's letter my curse shall be upon you and follow you always and this portrait which i had always hanging up in my cabin helped to keep me in mind of them i was therefore still a prey to great uneasiness and even good fortune failed to bring peace to my mind in all my prosperity i believed myself to be on the brink of some fresh disaster having proved by experience the instability of earthly things and when i was surrounded by misfortunes i of course assigned them to the cause uppermost in my mind my fears however were not realized during a second and third voyage which i made for my employer 
on the contrary they were so successful in a pecuniary point of view that i was able to buy a ship of my own which i freighted entirely on my own account my trading this time succeeded beyond my utmost expectations and on returning to england i found myself in possession of a considerable fortune i was now nearly sixty years of age and was beginning to feel a wandering life almost too much for me accordingly i resolved to retire from active work and return to my native land to devote my few remaining years to preparation for life eternal and the glory of him who has led me in such a wonderful manner to himself although i have passed through so much during my forty years wandering about the world have endured so many troubles and received so many undeserved blessings and although god has shown himself so good and gracious slow to anger and of great kindness towards me and though during these last few years especially his blessing has rested on all i have undertaken still even yet i start with a secret terror at the sight of the portrait which brings before my mind so clearly the father whom i disobeyed the recollection of his curse is never absent sometimes in the middle of the night i wake up trembling expecting the house is about to fall and crush me and it is only by earnest prayer that i can recover my self-possession here the captain ended his history the recital of which has deeply interested each and all of his hearers the worthy pastor did his utmost to convince him that his fears were only a vain superstition but the captain shook his head his kind counsellor saw that it would be unwise to argue the point and left him with thanks for his graphic narrative resolving to pray earnestly that god would remove from him the cloud of self-reproach and enable him to spend the remainder of his days in the brightness of christian hope end of chapter ten recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c chapter eleven of the captain's story this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the captain's story by william s martin chapter eleven command the past to god with all its irrevocable harm humbly but in cheerful trust and banish vain regrets come to him continually come casting all the present at his feet boldly but in prayerful love and fling off selfish cares commit the future to his will the viewless faded future zealously go forward with integrity and god will bless thy faith tupper a year had passed away since the captain had taken up his abode in the forester's house as it was still called in the course of which the intimacy between him and his good friend the pastor had been confirmed by many mutual acts of kindness the captain was a great favorite with the children and a visit to his house was looked upon by them as the greatest possible treat and many were the interesting and instructive stories which he related for their amusement his long wanderings in almost every part of the world furnished him with an exhaustible supply of anecdotes and narratives of foreign customs which the children could never grow tired of listening to his friends however could not help noticing 
that he had not yet shaken off his fear that some fresh misfortune was in store for him in consequence of his youthful disobedience and the curse which his father had pronounced upon him this he believed being unrevoked would as his father had written follow him always thus this one great sin of disobeying his father's commands had embittered his happiness for more than forty years not only when he was suffering what he justly believed to be the consequences of his wickedness but long after he had earnestly repented of all his sins and was living a peaceful godly life oh that all the boys and girls who may read this story would think over those words of st paul children obey your parents in the lord for this is right honor thy father and mother which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth epistles vi one to three and learn from this narrative that every act of wilful disobedience to a parent's commands is a sin against god which he is sure to punish the good pastor's prayers that the captain might be relieved from his anxiety of mind were not in vain and he himself was destined to be the happy instrument in god's hands of removing the burden that had so long oppressed his friend it happened one day when the pastor was writing in his study that a man called upon him for the purpose of obtaining a certificate of his birth which was necessary to enable him to receive a legacy to which he was entitled the pastor inquired his name my name is john lobert said the man and i have been living at liverpool for many years but i now intend to settle down here in my native village for the remainder of my life when you were at liverpool did you ever meet captain buchanan asked the pastor no said lobert i never met him there but i used to know him very well as a boy in fact he was an old schoolfellow of mine i was astonished when i arrived at dornbach last night to hear that he was living here i shall be delighted to see him again the captain i am sure will be pleased to see one of his old companions replied the pastor but wait a moment and i will give you your certificate in what year were you born in seventeen answered lobert ah that was in my predecessor's time said the pastor i must look through the old register which ends at his death in seventeen and unlocking a large box which stood in the corner of the room he took out the book and soon found the entry of lobert's birth upon the same page he noticed the name of his friend the captain and underneath it was fastened a sheet of paper the pastor unfolded this and glancing over its contents cried out with delight oh what a blessed discovery this is for my dear friend the captain he folded up the paper and putting it in his pocket wrote out the required certificate for lobert who took his leave promising to call and see the captain on the next day as soon as he had gone the pastor ran to the captain's house good news my friend said he as soon as they met i am the bearer of happy tidings for you here read this paper the captain's eyes filled with tears as he read and falling on his knees he gave thanks to god for the mercy he had shown him he then rose from his knees and read aloud the important document which was as follows i earnestly beg any one into whose hands this paper may fall 
to tell my son francis buchanan if he be still living that his old father before his death has forgiven his disobedience and revoked the curse which he pronounced upon him in a moment of anger i pray also that god will forgive him and turn him from the error of his ways g buchanan pastor dornbach fifteenth of june seventeen the captain was quite an altered man now the anxiety that had weighed upon his mind for so many years being removed his life glided on smoothly and peacefully the past only seemed to him as a terrible dream from which he now awakened lobert duly called upon the captain on the following day and was received with much joy which was increased when he found that he too had chosen the better part which shall be never taken away he soon became intimate with the pastor's family and the three friends enjoyed each other's society for many happy years the captain devoted the greater part of his time and his fortune to relieving the wants of the poor in his neighborhood and was long remembered by the inhabitants of the little village of dornbach as the good captain buchanan End of chapter eleven recording by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c end of the captain's story by william s martin